Hi, this is Stephen Cox from Share Navigator, and today we're going to talk about the bear put spread, which is a debit spread. We're going to use a real life example from our trading accounts, replace the trade on SPY, and we'll talk you through the trades. So, the first thing, a um, bit of housekeeping, there's our overview. This is what we're going to take you through today. So, we really don't want to spend any time dawdling on this. You can read this in your own time, and we're going to move on straight away. So, the first thing about a bear put spread. Um, it's a debit spread. You're going to pay for this trade up front. It's a bearish trade. You want the share price to fall. However, it's not as bearish as if you just bought a put option on its own. So it's only mildly bearish. It's best placed when implied volatility is lower. And you want at that stage then when you've placed this trade, implied volatility to increase as the share price normally falls. So how do you construct a trade like this? It's two trades and it's usually placed as a combination trade. It's totally made up of put options on the same underlying and for the same expiry date. So the two trades are, the first one is you buy a put option as a certain strike price and then the second trade is you sell a put option at a strike price below the put option that you just bought. So let us bring you into a real life example here with SPY. This is a trade we currently have, it's a bear put spread. So trade number one, we've bought our June 19th expiry 2015 $211 put option. We bought three contracts and we paid out 358. Then the second part of the trade was we bought the June 19th expiry, so it's the same expiry as the 211 put, and this time we sold the 208 put. And we got income from that of 255. We'll just round that up. That's all after costs. So that's a trade we actually placed. So it's a real life example. We'll show you a chart. At the time the shares were trading, we placed this at about three days ago. It was trading at about 211, 212. And we really felt that because on this chart here, you can see as well, employed volatility is low, has been low for quite some time that implied volatility is likely to kick up in the future and uh, we want to benefit from that and we think that will cause a, a set off in the shares whether we're right or wrong that's what we believe okay so really what we want to do now is go through that trade so the shares were trading at 211.64 we believe the correction was likely in the market and implied volatility would rise our first trade we've already described that we paid 358 for the $211 put option, but then we sold the $208 put option and received 255. So if you think about it, when you buy a put option, you want share prices to fall, but then we're also selling a put option here. And usually when you sell a put option, you want the share price to stay above that level. But actually when you place these two trades in combination, the net effect is actually still net bearish. And it's a cost was to place this trade. So the cost of actually buying the, the initial $211 put option was $358, minus the income we received from the 208 put option was $255. So the net cost was a dollar and three cents per share or $103 per contract. So what's the risk to us? Bottom line is the risk is the amount you paid out. You can't lose any more than what you paid for the debit spread. So in this case, for our trade, it was 103. So what's our maximum potential profit here? Um, well, the maximum profit is achieved when the share price finishes below $208. But as you can see, below that level, we can only make a certain amount. We can't make any more profit. And the max profit is calculated by taking the difference between the two strike prices minus the net debit we paid out. So for our trade with SPY, the difference between the strikes was $3. Remember, we bought the $211 put and we sold the 208 put. So the difference between those two is $3. We paid 103 for that. So that must be taken away from this as a from our profit potential. And that gives us a max profit potential of $197 per share or $197 per contract. That's the most amount of money we can make. So that begs the question: what's the break-even point? Well, the higher strike price minus the net debit paid. So the higher strike price was 211. We paid out 103. So the break even point is 211 minus 103, which is 209.97. So the minute the shares start falling below 209.97 at expiry Friday, we're going to be making 
some type of a profit. We may not necessarily be making full profit. It will depend where the share price ends up. So that begs the question, when are we in a partial profit or a partial loss position? Well, partial profit is achieved when the share price finishes between the lower strike price, so the lower stroke price was 208, and the break-even point. And the break-even point was 209.97. On the partial loss side, that's achieved when the share price finishes between the higher strike price, which was 211, and our break-even point. So if we get to expiry Friday and the shares, for argument's sake, are trading at $210, we're going to be in a very small partial loss position. On the other hand, if they're trading, let's say, for argument's sake, at 209, we're going to be in a partial profit position. If the shares finish below 208, we're going to make full profit. If they finish above 211, we're going to lose our investment of $103. That's the way it works. So calculating your return on investment, it's really important for you to know, you know, on a percentage basis, how much profit you're going to make for the risk that you're taking. So we're risking $103 to make $197. This is our max profit here. So in percentage terms, there's a calculation for you. It's 191%. So it's pretty impressive. But the reality is with this particular trade, we've actually only got about a 56, 57% chance of this particular trade working out. Um, it's, it's, it's a better odds than if we just bought a share or shorted a share. Um, but still, um, you, it's not a high probability trade by our context. So you're risking a small amount to make a lot, basically. Now, just a quick note on this. We very rarely actually wait for full profit. We very rarely leave these trades run their term to expiry. Um, we would normally book our profit in at maybe, you know, if we 25, 30, 40, up to 50% profit, and then we walk away. So remember, if you manage your winners, you'll never go broke. So what's the effect of volatility in this particular trade? Well, we normally place these trades when implied volatility is low. We want implied volatility to increase. That normally means uh, a result in a share price fall. Um, but the, the, the really the, the effect on your profit or losses really depends on where the share price is trading at at the time. You know, if the puts are in the money and then, of course, the amount of time to expiration. So, but normally, as a rule of thumb, don't place these trades if employed volatility is high. You normally wait for employed volatility to be low. What is the effect of time decay? And theta is the Greek for time decay. Again, this depends on where the stock is trading. Now, if SPY was trading closer to 211, our higher strike, our losses will be increasing at a faster rate as time passes. On the flip side, if the share price is trading closer to the 208 strike, our profits are usually increasing at a faster rate as time passes. So again, remember the net result is we want the share price to fall here. So picking the strikes, you're at home now, how do you go about picking strikes for this? It really depends on how bullish or bearish you really are. Here are some guidelines. You're most bearish when both strikes are out of the money. So in the case of SPY, the share price was trading at 211. If we had it picked, for argument's sake, the 207, 204 puts, that would have been a really bearish position. We would need the share price to drop a lot in order to make money. A moderately bearish trade is when the share price is in between both strikes. Now, our, our trade was more or less in between both strikes when we placed it. So we were moderately bearish. And you're least bearish when both puts are in the money. In other words, when the strike prices are above the share price. So again, we placed the trade when SPY was at 211. If we had picked the 214 and 217 strikes, that would have been least bearish. And we would only be putting on that type of trade to take advantage of time decay, okay? So in our trade, we were moderately bearish. So now we get on to managing the trade. As we said, we normally manage partial profits. We don't wait to get to expiry to close these trades down. So, but just a couple of tips for you. If you're in a partial loss position, you've got two options. You can close the trade for a loss at expiry. Just close both options down and, and walk away. So just remember, you have a short put option. And a short put option basically means that you're insuring a stock for a, a certain level. So you do not want to get assigned those shares after expiry Friday. So remember to close them down. If you're closing down at a loss, just walk away, close both sides of the trade down. 
if you feel for argument's sake that your argument is still valid you just need more time for it to work out you can roll both trades out to the next month so basically you're buying back the current trade and then placing the exact same trade out maybe into july that's how that would work there and most brokers give you that rollout function in their in their trading software so again never take assignment of the short puts either roll them out or close down the trade before expiry We'll bring up our trade again just to show you. You can see here at the moment we're in a profit position here. We've made about what $59 in that trade. We could close both of these down and book that trade right now. But we believe volatility will increase a little bit more. We're going to wait maybe for $100 $150 profit and then we'll close the particular trade down. But again we'll monitor this every day and see how the market conditions and what they dictate to us. So finally all of our training is free. Please visit our website and share with your friends. If you feel you got value from this video, we would really encourage you to share it with your friends and visit ShareNavigator.com. Thank you. This is Stephen from ShareNavigator. Thanks and bye for now.